Hello and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter, and welcome if you're new. Now, plasticity's really changed my hard surface workflow, and while it may look bare bones at first with its minimalist UI, don't let that fool you, it's really quite powerful under the hood, especially for conceptualizing something on the fly. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use some of Plasticity's most basic tools to create a design with rhythm and continuity. By repeating or matching specific design elements, we can quickly establish a harmonious design that would be difficult to quickly achieve in Polygon software. We can use complementary lines, shapes, and even surface angles to establish a unified look. Now just before we get into it, if you're new and you don't know what the hell a plasticity is, then it's a recent 3D software package that's aimed at artists. But the twist is that it's running on a powerful engine called Parasolid, which is predominantly up until now used in the engineering side of 3D modeling. Now this allows you as an artist to harness that power and it's packaged in a way that, for me at least, is just bloody intuitive and palatable to use. Now, if you want to follow along, you can get Plasticity free for 30 days. Just go to the website linked below, download it, install it, all of that. And then after your free month, if it's something that you want to stick with, you can use my discount code REFUGE10 for a 10% discount on either the studio or the indie license. So let's crack into it now. All good designs come with sacrifice, and that's sacrificing the default cube. Now what we're going to do, press 1 on our numpad to come into front mode. I'm going to grab this corner rectangle from here, and I'm going to take it to our origin point here, and I'm just going to start dragging it uh, to the bottom right, and I'm going to press C to uh, turn it into a center rectangle. Now this is way too big, so I'm going to scale this by 0.10. Scale, scale, 0.1. Okay, and we're just going to bring this uh, grid size down to five centimeters. Now we've got something to work with there. So what we're going to do is we're going to press one and we're just going to fill up these edges till we've got a nice rounded shape like that. Okay, and then we're going to press three and we're just going to pull that across and we're going to press tab and we're going to get it roughly that shape here. Now. We're going to pull a, there's, I mean, we could get into some complex surfacing and stuff, but I want to keep it pretty basic today. So what I want to do, we'll select this face here. We're going to press shift S to convert this into a spline. Okay. And then we'll do that a couple of times. We're going to go into just point mode only up here and select these ones up the top here and bring them forward. And we're just going to select these bottom ones and we're going to bring them backward to give this a little bit of curvature. Now what we can do is we can now go into pressing F and type in toggle and we've got toggle points. I've got that set to Z. Okay, you can right click and change shortcuts uh, and I'm just going to toggle those points off. So now we've got a little bit of shape. I'm going to ISO param this across like so. Now we're starting to get a shape here. Now the first thing is, is we've got a bit of curvature here. I want buttons down here. So let's just make some buttons let's make a actually let's first of all select this face press shift space okay i'm gonna get rid of isolated mode i don't know why that is we've got our temporary construction plane i'm going to click on that once and i'm going to double click it so we go into our temporary construction plane mode okay we're going to take a corner rectangle and we're going to roughly put it in the middle of this um here okay and what we're going to do we're just going to pull that out like that we're going to go back to our custom plane and we're going to mirror it along the x-axis. Actually, we might just drag that one by hand. G down like that. Shift D, drag it down like that. And then we're going to select both of these and mirror it on there. So we've got nice four buttons. So let's take a step back. And just give this its fillet right now and then we can um, actually let's just do an array let's have three buttons and mirror those across like so okay so now we've got those all on that plane as you can see that's kind of on an angle like that okay 
So if we come back into front mode, you can see that they're all slightly on an angle. Now we want to press 4 to go into body mode, press Q and just drag across like that. To get rid of those, we can get rid of that curve. And now what we want to do is we want to offset these, go back into our custom plane, and we can select all of these, and we can Shift D to make them all individual faces, and then we can thicken the sheet out like that. But you might see that they're not really coming out how they should. So what we want to do now is we want to grab these and we just want to offset them back in this direction and select this face and they all match that um, there. Now I feel like they're a little bit um, not button and buttoning enough so we'll just select these loops here and SS 0.9 Oh, actually, we just select one of these and we'll just start pulling these in like that. Okay, so now all of these buttons, this is our first thing. All of these buttons are conforming to the face of here. So we can do whatever we like with them. Now, what I want to actually do with this is on this plane, while we're in this custom plane, I want to S, Z, zero them out. Okay, and then I want to shift S twice just to give them a little bit of uh, curvature on these buttons to give them a kind of rubbery kind of, um, and then we should be able to pull those out like that. And then what we want to do, we'll just give these all a fillet. Alrighty. And I want to make that G2 if I can. Might take a little while. Okay, there we go. So we've got our buttons, and the reason that we duplicated those is because if you want to texture this later on and bake your AO maps, you really want these to be separate objects at the time that you bake them as AO maps. Okay, so just a little bit of forward thinking. Now the second thing is, is we can use lines um, to define our shape language. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start, and I'm just going to make a chamfer here like that. Okay, so we've got this shape starting to make face we'll bring this in a little bit we'll get rid of our custom plane we don't need that anymore as you can see the buttons conform to that in a curved way uh, not just on a flat plane and so now we've got this we can give these all a slight bevel as well just so we can get a nice don't know if i want to go with a chamfer or a bevel here all right and then we same thing here s y0 and we'll just subdivide that a couple times and just give a little bit of curvature there's better ways to get a curvature on this but just for this just giving this a little bit of curvature and we'll just toggle all of these points off okay so it's just checking our yeah we're starting to get a nice shape here okay now we can try and bevel this here or fill it it and that's quite nice but let's do something else let's select this whole loop and let's do a pipe okay and let's just make that a little bit fatter like so and now we've got that pipe and we can do a double let's make it a little bit fatter than what we just had there as you can see, if you just press P and press P for pipe, we're getting that um, there. There we go. So we've got that nice little cornered edge there. Now what we can do is we can um, start to bring something in like this on the X axis. OK, I think it's a little bit high for what I want. So we'll just just above this line on the x-axis and then pulling this over here I can tap shift on that actually we'll start that again just above here x gonna bring this down on the Z 
can press Alt Z to go into X-ray mode to make sure that it's correct. And then I can tap shift on here and bring that up like that. Now I want to just edit this slightly and bring this up like that. And I think that's fine. So now we can mirror that across there. And we just want to get actually a slight bevel on all of these points in the positive direction like so. But what we are doing here is we're matching these lines and helping the shape language along. Now we can select both of these and press C. Okay. And if we can manage to select two of the lines there, we should be able to bevel that. And I want to kind of match that to that bevel just by clicking that fill it there. So we'll just do that again. So I'm just beveling this or filleting it and then I'm selecting that and then that should match. Now I want to try and make it a G2. Okay, so we can get rid of this guy here and we can just mirror this across like that. Okay, so as you can see we're starting to build up some kind of shape. Now what we can do is we can also uh, try and chamfer fill at those all right and we'll just mirror this across all right so we're starting to get a nice little shape here so as you can see we've just used some really really basic tools and then just for the back of this, we can maybe pull this out a bit. Ergonomic for the hand. And select both of these. Champ for that and get it to match that. And then we've just got these ones here. Which aren't going to don't seem to like so we could maybe just leave them or we could do the pipe trick again if it will have us nope we'll leave that you can figure that one out that's just problem solving but what you can see here we got quite a cool shape quite quickly from just a really basic curve at the beginning actually that's the one last thing that we can do is we can just take a line going on the Z down like this and then we get to the middle we can use this line actually get a little bit below the middle to about actually we can put it in on an angle And then we can use this line here to come out the bottom. And then we'll just press 1. Give this a nice long fillet. And then we can see, cut through the model. And then we can select the top and hopefully the bottom, God willing. All right, and we can just give that a nice chamfer and match it to those as well. So that just sort of breaks up the... So like I said at the beginning, we're creating a little bit of harmony in the shape language. So as this comes down straight, it then also joins this curved shape on the long way down there. All of these buttons are flush with the curve of the object, and we're getting matching shape language so this is very very simple this is basic stuff guys but as you can see from just a curve and in just a few minutes we were able to really establish we've gone from that to that in 10 minutes and i think that's really cool and that's why i love plasticity so much because in blender for me to do something like this 
There's things that Blender is very, very good at that I can't do in plasticity. But to get something like this that quickly in Blender, uh, for me, is impossible. And probably would require a, a lot of plugins. Now, the last thing that we always want to do is we just want to delete any redundant topology that might be lingering before you export it outwards or anything like that. So just a real quick one, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going away for a couple of days, so uh, there'll be more content next week. Um, and uh, see you in the next one. Tschüss.